Hey everyone, it's Blake. Welcome in to episode number 24 of our Exploring the Seaverse series in DW 2020. This is FCW Freedom Caribbean Wrestling, and uh, we are now on to another company here in the starting universe uh, in the Cornellverse. And um, look, we're almost, I mean, there's not that many left as I started to sort of make my notes for the, the ones that, that I'm working on after this one. I'm like, there's not really that many companies left to go, and probably some of the ones that are left may not be the most appealing. However, I would not group FCW into that because I do think this is a pretty uh, appealing promotion if you want to start um, at a smaller size and really kind of lean into sort of the history of the promotion that's been around for a while now, as we know. Um, and I think a pretty nice, um, you know, tag team division, great group of sort of top stars, which we'll talk about going into this. So uh, be sure to check out all the other stuff in the Exploring the Seaverse series. Uh, 20 plus companies already looked at. And now we go on to FCW. So you start out as 33rd in the world here, um, $75,000 to work with. Those are, you know, about what you'd expect for a company of this size. 43% prestige, 40% momentum. Uh, does start as a tiny company. Uh, is worth noting, you're at 31 right now in Puerto Rico. All you have to get to get the small is 35. I think when you when we look at the roster here in a second, that should be a very easy path to do so. Uh, because you do have some people popularity wise that should be able to sort of get you over that, um, you know, kind of mark here pretty soon, I would say, uh, into the save. So you should move into small size uh, soon uh, rather than later, because I do think it will, will probably, again, given the roster, I think you can do it pretty quickly. So, uh, all right, let's look at the background here. Uh, if you looked at FCW before, which again has been in a lot of TW games, <laughs> just given how far back it goes to 2007. Puerto Rican power, Sean Gonzalez, uh, the late Sean Gonzalez, uh, was part of that. And as you see here, 2011, um, it's really all been about Puerto Rican power. And, you know, his retirement, though, that's opened up some questions. But still, um, you know, the style itself, looking at sort of the traditional type of wrestling, a lot of good character work, um, and really just kind of drawing in fans in that way. And in some sense, it's kind of similar, I guess, to the actual Puerto Rican wrestling scene uh, in reality. So there are some things there that you could use with that. Um, and so that can be something that's kind of fun to lean into. So it's really just continuing to to push forward. I mean, that's really kind of what this is all about. And, you know, I think one of the things would be, can you continue to grow without uh, the in-ring uh, quality and the recognition of one Puerto Rican power here? Uh, but I think you can when we look at the roster. So I don't think that's um, a huge question mark there. But I, I do think this is a pretty pretty interesting promotion if you want to start with because there are a lot of different directions you can go uh, and we'll talk about that as we go along all right to the product we go because we know how important that is when you're choosing a company uh throwback wrestling is the style name core product classic wild west so <laughs> classic wild west i mean pretty much think about like the texas style in the 80s you know you can go back to world class championship wrestling all those places like that um just a lot of you know action-packed bloody type matches um and look you know, so you can go to Puerto Rico, uh, if you want to go just in terms of drawing comparisons to reality, um, bloody matches, but huge angles. So you just have these really, you know, heated angles and those kind of things. So this is, this is more my style. Like I like this kind of the setup, you know, I guess I've told you guys before, sometimes I do find myself going back and watching some old like 1980 stuff. And it's kind of fun to watch some of the territory stuff. And this is kind of what FCW feels like. It's sort of a, you know, a territory promotion uh, and that, you know, kind of uses this sort of style to really push itself forward. does have the, the, the face heel divide here as loosely enforced. Maybe it's just a personal preference, but I don't know that I wouldn't maybe make that strictly enforced. Um, but again, that's total per personal preference. But I, I may lean into that if I started to save with FCW. Um, you can kind of see the, the, the breakdown here. You know, 85% matches, 15% angles. Obviously, I have a 15% wiggle room there. One way or the other, but, um, you know, kind of use the angles rather than uh, quantity. It's more about quality with the angles. And so that's what you can really lo you look at there as you, you book. It is a physical style on the workers because, as we said, it is, you know, these are action-packed, bloody-type matches. Um, so a lot of hard-hitting action, those kind of things. So that's something to look at. You do need some storylines, so always keep that in mind uh, with this kind of promotion. Uh, let me see if I can find it here. Obviously, you need to have storylines, but the huge matches, you definitely need to make sure, um, you know, to tie in the storyline with those because you're going to get that penalty if you don't. So um, that is something to think about there. Multiple match aims will be required. Uh, you need a hardcore wild brawl and a storytelling for each event. So those two uh, will certainly kind of factor into 
your booking on each show and everything else, uh, you know, pretty much your your basic sort of stuff here. Um, you do have a pretty a wide open um, choice here in terms of match type. As you say, the, as you see here, the, the fans are open minded. We'll accept any match type out there. So you can be creative in terms of how many sort of gimmick matches you want to use and those kind of things. So, uh, yeah, this is sort of your classic 1980 style here for that. All right, scheduling-wise, there is honestly nothing I, I really could note here other than it's your normal schedule. Like, it's an event every month. As you start off here, you do have an off-air TV show uh, with this, but, you know, again, that's I don't know that that would be something you may lean into. It depends on if you create some, you know, partnerships or talent trade. I, I don't know, but... Um, you know, your, your schedule is what it is. I mean, I don't, you know, there's no season finale. There's nothing like that. So you can kind of make this schedule what you want based on the names. Um, you know, again, that can be something that you can lean into, uh, if you want to do that. So there's really not a lot to say in terms of the schedule, uh, titles, same thing, you know, really not a lot to, to add here in terms of the titles. The Puerto Rican championship is your top one. I did note that I really like the graphics for these belts. Um, they're, they're, they're pretty good. I like these, but um, so Handsome Stranger, your current uh, Puerto Rican champion, the main event scene, again, you're in the territory here with the top title. That's a big uh, thing. He's been the champ for 245 days to this point. So a long reigning champion to start off with. The People's Champion, Chip, uh, the Rock holds here. No, I'm just kidding. That's uh, Zavi Ferreira is your current champion, uh, but it is your, you know, mid-card sort of title here on that, held it for 77 days at this point. Um, so, look, I like the graphic here. Like I said, I really like this one. Um, tag team champions, and we're gonna we're gonna show you what all four of these uh, guys have in common here in a second. But so your tag team championship, uh, you know, another one that's just a floating level. So, um, you know, you can kind of decide how important you want the, the the title to be. But it is, you know, nice here in terms of 43% prestige. So it's not that far away from the top title. So, um, yeah, that's that's something you can look at in terms of how you use that. All right, so to tie all this in, your Puerto Rican champion, Handsome Stranger, your people's champions, Avi Ferreira, and your tag team champions are Ricochet, Ramon, and Rob Reynolds. What do they all have in common? Well, they're all in the same stable. So if you want your bloodline-esque um, you know, thing to start off with here with the one stable holding all the belts, that is where things stand right now with House Handsome because they do hold all the championships in FCW at the moment. And so, um, you know, your top heel group here. So you can, you know, that's something you can start with in terms of a storyline. Um, how do you go about maybe getting the belts off of them? How does their run continue? All sorts of dynamics there. So I think that is something you can, you know, you can use as a story prop to start off with um, for sure. So that's something to think about if you want to start an FCW save, the, 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 save the Latino Kings, uh, not really a major player in FCW, but that is another stable that you do have there. Uh, with that um, tag team division, I did notice pretty nice tag team division when I looked at it. Um, you know, you've got some that, you know, like I said, hostile take over here. Frederick and Handsome Stranger, basically the two top stars in the company. Um, you know, that's your that's your top experience from that standpoint. Um, you know, you can lean into the Gonzalez family. Um, you know, there, there's a lot of I think in terms of gimmicks. I don't know if gimmicks the right word, but like you have a pretty good uh, group here, the Harlem Knights. Um, you know, the Latino Kings, the Puerto Rican boys. So, you know, there's a lot of pretty fun gimmicks here I think you can work with in terms of the tag teams. And you do have some experience ones like we see here, 72, for the Puerto Rican boys. So I like the tag team division for a small company like this or for a tiny company. I think it's a pretty good tag team division. And um, I do find that sort of appealing there with that. Um, all right, some of the other stuff before we, we kind of look a little bit more at how the roster is structured. No child company, no developmental, no training. As a tiny company, um, you know, I'm trying to see if anything else. So let's get to this part because I think this is important. So you are eligible to join the Confederation of the Territories. Now, again, that's totally, you know, your call here. But I do think you can look at this um, and see, you know, this could be certainly an interesting option to look at if you wanted to. Um, not required, but we don't really, you know, a lot of companies we've gone through, there are certainly, you know, some companies that are, not within this region that are eligible that are not eligible for this but because you are uh you know in puerto rico you're eligible to join this alliance so that's something to think about um you know you kind of see the rules of it here in terms of you're not gonna be able to run shows in these areas but um you, you can sort of you know do talent trades and those kind of things so something to think about uh if you want to kind of use that i don't I even know if it's necessary from the start to be honest with you because i do think the roster is pretty impressive 
which we'll continue to talk about, but that is something. But you do also have a talent trading agreement right off the bat with PSW. So um, that's something else where, say, look, if you joined an alliance, you got other, there's, there's a lot of options in terms of talent trades and bringing in other workers. So, all right, let's go to the creative section as we kind of break down the roster, as we said. Frederick, easily the top one, now 44 years old, um, you know, active wrestler, uh, and, you know, again, it was an SWF um, under a different, well, kind of the same name. But, um, you know, so I think it's it's something where you look at the popularity, right? If you're looking to grow, you see the stats, 60 popularity. Like, you, if you want to use them, I mean, you, you pretty much, you know, know that the popularity for a company that, what do we say, is like starting at 30, what, 31, something like that. I mean, having someone like this in the main event is really going to help because the popularity is there. Um, but you know, that's something to really think about. And, you know, the, the charisma microphone skills, I mean, you can just get a lot of angles with high ratings and those kind of things. So I think that is something to definitely think about. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's, you know, that's someone I think you'll probably use as much as you can, even though I said 44 years old, depends on when he retires, those kind of things. So you don't really know uh, with that, but handsome stranger, also 44 years old. So that is something to really look at with FCW. You kind of have, you know, as I said, easily your top two stars here, I think. Both 44. Um, I, I, you know, probably some people who have maybe played as this company can tell you when these guys start to retire. Um, but having played through it, not played through it yet, excuse me, I don't really know exactly when they start to retire. But that's something they have to think about with all these kind of promotions. So uh, that is something there uh, with those two guys in particular. Uh, Billy Russell, guess what? He's an occasional wrestler, but he's 45. So, you know, your top three in terms of your franchise players are all 44 years or older. Um, so that's something that, you know, you can see as a, a bad thing, but you also see it as a good thing as you start to lean into the younger talent. And one in particular, as I have noted here, Mutant, 25 years old. Um, and as we see, is sort of uh, eventually was turned babyface by the fans. They they bought into this this character here and now feuding with House Handsome. Um, so that is something again, 35 popularity in Puerto Rico, uh, star qualities there, you know, some of the skills are there too, as they progress. Um, that's kind of a fun thing, a powerhouse guy going up against this, this hill stable. That's always, you know, potential money drawing there, uh, when you look at it from that standpoint. So I find that, I find that is another fun element you can start with. Kip Keenan, 32 years old. Um, you know, someone else who's got all the skills here in terms of, uh, just, you know, everything you kind of need you know, can kind of be the total package for you. you can do a lot of different things. So I think someone can be very valuable. Number one baby face, as you see here in the bio. Um, so, but could it be stolen away? <laughs> That's always the question when it comes to these kind of companies. So next big things, you got a, a decent group here. You know, Ferreira's there. We already talked about him. Um, you know, some other people here, Lane, someone else, as I looked at it, great skills here, but it is noted, you know, like with all these kind of guys, 27 in Puerto Rico, um, you know, could be poached away by other top promotions just given the actual skill here because from this standpoint this is a i'm pretty sure he's the top in the company when it comes to charisma microphone and all those sort of entertainment type skills so that is something to really look at your host prospects look list is pretty much the exact same uh as the other one except for 20 year old taylor norton here um who i don't really see a lot that stands out off the bat but um still um he's he's also a, a legendary partier uh so that is um that's hey, he's that's that's his gimmick, I guess. He's I don't know, it's gimmick in his real life. He's a legendary partier, so uh, I guess maybe relying on him as a champion may not be the best idea right off the bat. As we said, looking at sort of the guys who can do all. I mean, it's pretty much the same group here, including our friend Jack. Um, but you know, in ring work, you've got Davis Wayne Newton, someone I feel like who has been around forever in CW, uh, and feels like you've just I've seen him every other place. Uh, but now you know he's here. Good star quality, um, and yeah, just a lot of a lot of different stuff. Um, so again, he's someone else that you can look at in terms of the in ring work. Um, and you know, look, I just like I said, there's a lot of different guys here. I think it's a pretty good group of talent uh, to work with, and you know, star quality, those kind of things. It's not a huge roster, um, but you know, you've got kind of that good mix. I think of some good in ring workers. As I said, I think you got good variety in the tag team division, uh, and you've also got trying to you've also got the element of trying to figure out okay stranger retires you know frederick retires um you know russell as we said is an occasional wrestler like who are the guys that are you know you're kind of molding into the future 
Uh, and I think, as we mentioned, there are some, there's a lot to choose from, whether it's mutant, um, you know, guys like that. I don't, I don't know. There's a lot of different ones. So, um, yeah, so you've got, you've got a pretty good, interesting group here, I think, to work with. And so I find the roster pretty appealing to start off with for a company that's tiny size. Uh, and hey, who knows? Maybe that may be something that intrigues you when it comes to FCW. So there's a look at Freedom Caribbean Wrestling. And uh, as always, be sure to like, share, subscribe, all that good stuff. And uh, we will continue to look at a lot more of these companies. And also be sure to leave your feedback in the comments if you've played as FCW before, uh, which I assume, I mean, look, they go all, they say, they go all the way back to 2007. So I assume you play with them at some point or another. I remember playing with them. I want to say it may have been, I don't know if it was 10 or 13. I remember playing with them quite a bit. Um, but haven't really played as, as them in quite a while, but, uh, I had some fun with that, that say from what I remember. It may actually it may have gone all the way back. I don't remember, but, um, yeah, I, I remember playing a, a pretty long-term save with them at one point, but you know, that was when Puerto Rican power was doing his thing, but he's not there as a wrestler now. So, um, yeah, a lot of interesting stuff. So leave your feedback, tips, tricks, all that good stuff. If you play with FCW in this particular version of the game, uh, and all that. So always appreciated by other players out there. So, Appreciate you guys, as always, for watching, and on the next episode of our Exploring the Seaver series, we will head to Europe for something a little bit different from uh, the product of FCW as we go to UEW.